the healthy skin blueprint. If you struggle with skin issues, whether it's rashes or eczema or funguses or candida, this is what we're breaking down. It's the largest organ of your body. It's an organ, it protects you. It has so many functions, absorbing nutrients, absorbing vitamin D, protecting you from the elements. But this big organ has a lot of needs when it's the biggest. And how can we supply it with the nutrients, the foods, the care? We're breaking it down right now to guide you. While we go, I've laid out my resource guide and this will have and break down as I go. My research step-by-step step as we go here. Let's go. Skin is the largest organ of the body with a total area of about 20 square air feet. The skin protects us from microbes and the elements, helps regulate body temperature, and permits the sensation of touch, heat, and cold. Fun fact, it takes your skin 27 days to regenerate. So the skin you have right now in the outer layer, one month from now, can be completely different. Should we feed those new skin cells with lots of nutrients and lots of water and lots of health. I wonder what they could look like in just 27 days. A new outside, new skin in 27 days. Now, that doesn't change the old blemishes. That doesn't change some of the wrinkles. That doesn't change some of the wear and tear as we age. However, you are generating new cells. So if we can make those cells out of healthier fats, more fluids, better nutrients, you get healthier looking skin, but you gotta give that a month to get those things in. Also know that whatever you're putting on it is going in you. So here's the PubMed study showing that the skin absorption was anywhere from 29 to 91% of the total dose when they measured chemicals getting absorbed into the skin. Up to 64% of everything that went on the skin was absorbed into it. Even if we're on the low end there of 29% of anything that you're putting on your skin goes into the body. That's a concerning thing. So we've gotta be much more aware of what's going on in that skin because then it's ending up in our bloodstream and it could potentially be making us sick. Now, it's meant to block and to protect us, but are you getting toxified by what you put on your skin? So let's go through the layers of it so you can understand maybe where you need to focus more to get better skin that glows, that's not aging as fast, that doesn't look as tired or maybe as impacted. Three main layers of the skin. First layer is called the epidermis. This is your outer skin layer. This is the one that you're shedding anywhere from every 14 to 28 days. This is what peels when you burn. It's your protective layer. It prevents water loss. This is what controls the brown spots of the skin or the tone and the color of the skin. The melanin lives in this area. So if you struggle with those, or there's spots on the skin, or there's a buildup of melanin in areas, brown spots, even liver spots, rashes, things like that, you really wanna take care of the epidermis this outside layer is what we need to be focused on. So I'm gonna give you some steps on how you can do that. One of the main ones obviously is getting enough water, getting enough water to make the outside of that skin look better. Now the second layer is called the dermis. The dermish is gonna be way more connected to the tensile, the wrinkles, the condition and the toneness of the skin, right? Collagen production provides nutrients to the outer layers. So this is a very important thick layer that's going to give a lot of nutrients, a lot of health to the outer layer. And then finally, there's the hypodermis. Now this is what gives skin its shape. It's the shock absorber, it's the thermal insulator, it's the nutritional depot. So all of them live down here. So this is three layers, okay? So if there's way less tone, we wanna go deeper. When we're coming to like wrinkles, we're kind of up in this area, up into here. And then outside, if it's just like color of the skin, surface of the skin, then we wanna look at that protective water, melanin, epidermis layer. Okay, so it's kind of the three. I thought that was a little bit interesting to understand those three because most people probably haven't broken that down for you. So kind of the thicker you go, the more important then the tone becomes, but on the surface levels where we're addressing some of the blemishes and the things that we have. So what do we do for each layer, okay? Well, here's some of the main nutrients to focus on. Ingredients that keep the skin barrier healthy on the outside. Lipids, your UV protection, your exfoliation, right? That's your skin level. How do we keep the skin, the color, the outside of it looking better? So the focus on those then is actually really like omega-3s, fish oil, but even more so flaxseed. Good research behind it showing that it really helps this outer 
outer layer, these lipids, omega-3s, fish oil, flaxseed, to help the color, the softness of the outer layer of the skin, we're focusing on healthy lipids, healthy fats, which means if this outer layer gets rolled over every 14 to 28 days, if you're putting in good fats today, it starts to show up a month from now, okay? It takes about that amount of time. If you're putting a lot of bad fats in, rancid oils, soybean oils, vegetable oils, you're eating a lot of canola oil, you're eating a lot of fried foods, you're eating a lot of packaged foods, that's bad oil, that starts to show up in the skin. So one of the main things that I get a lot of comments on, they start following the way that Dr. Living Good eats because I'm one of the few doctors that focuses hardcore on healthy oils. So many focus really hardcore on carbohydrates, which are very important, but oils are even more important. The right type of fats going in your body. And when you start to switch and fuel your body with healthy fats, it's amazing to see what happens to this outer layer of skin. I love antioxidants out there. Speaking of just whether you're eating coconut oil, the proper right types of oil, or you're actually putting it on the outside layer of the skin, that's a good way to stimulate blood flow out here. Coconut oil does that. So if you've got bad joints, if you've got areas that are dry or, or poor circulation or aren't healthy or are rough, consider putting some coconut oil on the outside. Now you might have other oils that you enjoy. Just make sure there's no toxins in them, okay? I'm not huge into like, I'm not gonna be the guy that's gonna give you this huge, external skin regimen. Okay. There's probably some good ones out there. The main thing I'm looking for is, is there toxic ingredients on anything you're putting on your skin? If that answer is yes. Then we need to start making switches. And I try to use any kind of lotion, just something very simple. The less amount of ingredients, the better. Moisturizer is the same thing, but one good one, at least maybe at nighttime, putting coconut oil on your face probably isn't you know like the best option. But at nighttime, maybe it's your legs or your skin or other areas or even your hair, coconut oil is a great option. But just make sure things are non-toxic. Now, this is the exfoliation layer. So one of the easy things that you can do is make yourself a little salt and coffee scrub. Literally use the grounds of your coffee when you're done making it, and then you'll mix that with more of a, a granular salt, and you've got a little exfoliating scrub that you can literally put in a jar, leave in your shower, and use it on your areas of skin to get great exfoliation, okay? Now, a little bit of that's gonna go into the plumbing, just watch for any kind of clogging going on, but it really works. Now, how do we do this? I made an entire video about cellulite. In this cellulite video, I break down the healthy fat layer that I just described to you. It breaks down very focused on if you need some exfoliation for cellulite, you just want a good one for your face, you want from the struggling areas of skin on your body, that resource right there makes it very easy to take care of the epidermis. So eating healthy fats, that scrub has some good antioxidants in it. You can use the coffee grounds after you use the coffee, like you don't have to use fresh ones. Now, that's the first layer of the skin. So right, cellulite, we've got you know rough patches, we've got melanin problems. If that's the case, really focus on those lipids and then you may do some exfoliation or some coconut oil to stimulate some blood flow. So let's go another layer deep, pun intended. Second layer, dermis, ingredients that activate fibroblasts to produce collagen and elastin. This is all about collagen production. So the elasticity of the skin starts to lead to some of the tone of the skin. We wanna really focus on collagen production. So taking and using collagen as your protein, it's what I do as we age, collagen decreases. And so getting a clean source of collagen in regularly, especially the older you get, can really make a big difference on the skin, also makes a big difference in the gut. Now, if you're ingesting collagen, we wanna make sure it is grass-fed or pasture-raised if it's chicken or wild-caught, if it's fish form, a lot of it is bovine form. We wanna make sure it's been heavy metal tested so that there is not heavy metals existing in the collagen. Those are two crucial pieces that are musts. We wanna get a little silica in, some bamboo extract, horsetail herb, vitamin C is a precursor to collagen. So to help those fibroblasts, they use vitamin C. So vitamin C, very good for these two layers of the skin. Oligo elements, there they are again. The oligo elements, copper, selenium, very simple. We don't need a lot, but we need a little bit. These are precursors, especially copper, to building this layer. Keratin is involved in this layer here, creating those fibroblasts and the elastin. So keratin is gonna help drive that elastin. Vitamins A, D, E, and K2, the fat-soluble vitamins, 
help to produce this lipid layer here. And then this is where red light laser therapy or red light therapy itself, microneedling is gonna impact and get more blood flow and stimulation to the collagen production, to the fibroblasts to help stimulate this layer. So that's why some of those things might be beneficial to penetrate a little bit into the skin and get to these layers to make some impact, stimulate some blood flow, stimulate the nutrients, get them fired up, get those fibroblasts going. Those are the nutrients for this layer of the skin. And then finally, there's the hypodermis, which these are very closely related but you're getting you know the d3 the collagen the silica still impacting this area because it's giving that shock absorption the thermal insulation healthy hormones matter a lot right here so if you are dealing and struggling with hormone issues, that might be what's creating faster loss of shape of the skin. Infrared saunas start penetrating down into here and start eliminating some of the toxins that can reside in these areas. And oligo elements have an impact here. So you can see why when I understood the epidermis, the dermis, the hypodermis, what they did from lipid production to melanin to collagen and fibroblasts and elastin to the shock absorption and the nutrient deposits, the silica, helping with all three layers and helping support this, there's your layers, that's skin health. Now, some of the main skin conditions, dermatitis, atopic, so it's a form of eczema, starts in childhood, might be on specific joints, around the fingers and the hands is a very common place, elbows is very common. There's contact dermatitis, this is when you just come in contact with something and you get an allergic reaction to it, your skin flares up, okay? There's more of a blistering eczema, very common, you know, kind of filled with fluids that can pop up. And then there's just sheerly just out on the hands, hand eczema, which can sometimes be similar to atop. So this kind of like rashy flare ups on the body, what do we do with these? Like how do we start addressing these areas? So let's go after this corner, eczema angle, okay? The main things to add food wise, right? Really like fruits, they're high in vitamin C, can help with some of the oligo element absorption, even like a little bit of nickel. And so they might help in this regard at fighting things off. Foods that are high in quercetin, like apples, berries, dark cherries, red grapes, broccoli, onions. Quercetin is another good one that helps support and help the body battle when it comes to eczema related issues. Fermented foods is gonna help support that gut. The fatty fish is gonna help support the skin level like we talked about proper lipids, okay? And then I would try removing foods that are high in nickel. So vitamin C, I think I sort of misspoke there, is helping reduce nickel absorption. If you're absorbing too much nickel into your body or cobalt that are found in foods, this can really flare up eczema. So it's kind of a small nuance specifically for eczema sufferers of avoiding foods that are higher in nickel and cobalt and the absorption of it. So vitamin C, adding that into the regimen can help prevent that from happening and may help reduce it. So be definitely adding in extra vitamin C if you have eczema. Now, you wanna remove ultra processed foods, dairy, gluten, peanuts, soy, white flour products, and then even potentially nightshades. Nightshades are sort of the group of peppers, tomatoes, eggplant, that group. That can have some irritation happening as well. So this process here is more of an anti-inflammatory way of eating elimination. Now, a FODMAPS way of eating will help you get some of the nickel and cobalt out as well. So adding in that vitamin C we talked about, that's very crucial. Just externally, sometimes warm baths can help. Not in all scenarios, but in a lot of scenarios they can. Oatmeal bath or an Epsom salt bath, if that gets some relief. Externally, you could try coconut oil. You could try apple cider vinegar. Just make sure you either dilute it or put a little bit on a little spot first to see how you do with these things first, right? You don't have to go all in and put it everywhere. Put a little bit on and see if it helps that area. Aloe vera, just some things to be considering to put directly on the skin just to try to get some relief while you figure out the cause of the problem. B vitamins, very important. Vitamin C. So these are the focuses, I think, from an autoimmune perspective, usually it's the gut that's breaking down. And then the gut is backing up and pushing toxins into the skin. So if your skin looks like this, we need to take some immediate steps, cut out these types of foods, dairies, gluten, soy, peanuts, give your system a little bit of a break. Now the liver is so crucial to the health of the skin, hair and nails, because if it's unhealthy and your gut's unhealthy, all of that toxicity shows up on the outside. So when this filter's broken, the main filter's broken, the filter of your skin has to pick up the slack, flush that liver and cleanse it out.
A lot of times when one filter breaks, the filter of the liver, it shows up in the skin. So that's the main area to focus on. Something to consider that it could be contact dermatitis that's creating these issues. What are you coming in contact with? Otherwise, it's an inside job and it's something breaking down with your gut, your liver. So if you know it's not contact dermatitis and it's more of like an eczema type thing, you can do some testing. Now these go a little bit deeper. I would look at ferritin to get an idea. I would look at your liver enzymes, okay, as well. I would look at the liver ones because these are going to tell you if there is bogged down of the liver. Too much ferritin, too many liver enzymes being high. We just taught on it recently. When those are up, that liver is struggling, okay? You can do food sensitivity tests. It's not the first thing I jump to, but if you really want to know, do you have a nightshade sensitivity? Do you have, you know, is there nickel sensitivities or gluten? Things of those nature. Some of these tests can start to tell that. You can actually measure with a functional doctor that the health of the microbiome in your gut to see if those are way off and even heavy metals by testing your hair, or you can test the electrolytes by testing your hair. Now these are done by functional doctors. Typically, you don't have to jump to these things right away. I always say, do what you know to do first, and then you can go spend extra and dig deep and go crazy on testing. But oftentimes with testing, I've done a lot of it and on a lot of people, the outcome is what? Well, we need to put you through a regimen of cleaning up your gut and flushing your liver, and you need to do this cleanse and that cleanse, and you need to eat better for a longer period of time, and you need to cut out certain food groups. It's usually more obvious stuff because I've interacted with my patients bringing in a lot of functional medicine testing and the doctor doesn't even recommend a nutritional change. It's just like 16 supplements, right? Like, listen, I'm all for supplements because like it fills the gaps. However, it can't be just that thing. Like we need to make a nutritional change, go through a protocol. So it kind of shocked me in a couple of them. Now, there's some of the tests that can be done, but again, I would rather you go through the focuses first before you go too crazy with testing on that one. Now, is it infection related, fungus related, or maybe acne? From this perspective, the fastest way to help fix your skin, fix your fridge, fix your plate, fix your cupboard, okay? So we gotta fix that part of it first. Now, all natural sugars, sugar alternatives, you might cut those at first to stop feeding the wrong things. Here's kind of what you can focus on though. If it is fungus related and bacteria related and it's it's widespread, it's more in larger areas of the skin, I would definitely be doing some kind of liver cleanse. Now, if you have an isolated area of a infection on the skin, ear, your tongue, coconut oil is naturally antimicrobial, good one for any kind of skin rash or infection. Raw local honey, this is a good one. If you are struggling with like a shingle, that might be an option. So if you have an allergic reaction on the skin, that might be a good one to put on there. Or if you have an allergic reaction in general, as far as allergies flaring up, raw local honey is a good thing to put in like some tea or hot water. Vitamin C and bioflavonoids helps boost that immune system. We're trying to go more natural because we're absorbing 29% up to 64% of everything we're putting on the skin. Now from a testing standpoint there to see and get more insight, for example, on a candida issue or some kind of internal imbalance, you could look at glucose and insulin. If those are way off, then you really need to get strict on lowering sugar levels. You might have excess candida or parasite growth and the food that they're demanding is glucose and insulin, it's sugar. So if you crave it a lot, if those are out of balance, we've got to get those back into balance. White blood cell numbers could be high if you're fighting an allergen or a fungus. And again, you can look at microbiome. I think vitamin D3 is really important from an immune perspective. We want that to be high. Next condition, cellulitis. Can have this, this flare up, this issue of the skin, it's inflammation of it. Fevers and chills can come with it. Fatigue, pain, redness around the infected area. A lot of times in the extremities, it gets bigger and it can spread skins, rashes. They really start suddenly and spread and grow. And then the skin can get really tight and glossy and stretched. And so this is nothing to mess around with. This usually needs medical care. This is not meant to replace any kind of medical care with any of these issues. But if you have been struggling with this or maybe on the tail end of it, or if you, you kind of had it before and you identified it, maybe it's not a severe case and you're trying to wrestle with it, how do we start to get to the cause? Well, some of the foods to focus on for these that you might look at it, oysters, good source of zinc, lean meat, legumes, nuts, get your proteins, get your amino acids, citrus fruits, berries, we're looking at quercetin, vitamin C, turmeric is a good anti-inflammatory, garlic is another really good one that can help with the blood vessels, onions, more quercetin, and then fermented foods can really help with the gut side of things. We want a lot of extra water going in. 
for any skin condition. And then you're getting out processed carbs and sugars, processed foods, super important. It's several, several patients in the clinic with this going on. And it's like, you can't get them to stop eating fast food or sandwiches. Like we've got to get serious at that point with carbohydrates, with sugars and with processed food. They have to go. And I know there's a lot of different conditions, but that's what I get asked. This is the stuff that you guys ask me. And it's like, okay, well, I need a specific solution for that one. And then the next one, there's different scenarios and conditions you guys are dealing with. I want a lot of solutions for different things.